ಶಕ್ತಿ ದೇವಿ ಕಾಲರಾತ್ರೈ ನಮಃ ಸಹಸ್ರಾರಶಕ್ತಿ ದೇವಿ ಕಾಲರಾತ್ರೈ ನಮಃ ಸಹಸ್ರಾರಶಕ್ತಿ ದೇವಿ ಕಾಲರಾತ್ರೈ ನಮಃ ಜೈ ಹಿಂದ್ ಫೋಕ್ಸ್ ವಾಮ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸೆವೆಂತ್ ನೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ನವರಾತ್ರಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಒನ್ ದಿ ಸಪ್ತಮಿ and we are at the seventh level of the major chakras i am saying level rather than chakra because sahasrara matru pitru and guru gayatri are in reality not the typical chakras that we saw earlier like muladhara swadishtana manipura anahata vishuddhi and agnya all of which enabled motion chalana kriyati chakra and therefore they were called as chakras but here we have a place where we are free falling into absolutely no resistance no friction no damping no air drag in fact no atmosphere is just a blissful and ecstatic free fall from the agnya onwards and i'm showing upward direction for a fall and that itself is the beauty of who you see right up there radha the opposite of dhara dhara is what flows down from a higher potential to a lower potential but radha flows from a lower potential to the higher potential and the potential towards which she is flowing is krishna which means darkness black and that's exactly what kalaratri and our own nothingness shiva are too it's a complete union between the seeker and what is sought between shakti which is our kundalini and shiva that which is not and this union over here in the ardhanarishwara tatva or radha krishna tatva or sita rama tatva or uma maheshwara tatva whatever you may want to call it it essentially is the oneness of prakriti and purusha the oneness of nature and the very cause behind nature nature is just a manifestation of the true nature of who we are aham brahmasmi and today at the brahmarandra at the fontanel we have an opportunity to discover ourselves in the true form that we are as atma equal to brahman the formless nature that we are and for this light is a distraction i already told you the five senses were distractions so we dropped s t s t s and we dropped time as well and that time has to be frozen has to be destroyed in a darkness and that darkness is kala ratri because the word kala whether you're speaking any of the dravidian languages or the sanskrit derived languages if you think they are different in both of them kala or kali essentially means an emptiness a hollowness a darkness 
and time as well. Kalam as we call it in Tamil. Kal as we call it in Hindi. This is essentially one and the same. In fact, I already told you it's from time that space and the other elements arise. So time is the original manifestation, Kala. Now that Kala is being subsumed by Kalaratri into dark matter, Shiva, and dark energy, Mahakali or Kalaratri. Ratri refers to the darkness of the night, the pitch darkness of the night. So Kalaratri, the two words tend to be adjectives to each other, strengthening the level of darkness to much more than a black hole. And the beauty of the color black, as you very well know, is the fact that it absorbs everything into itself and reflects back nothing. But at the same time, those who are into science and engineering know that black bodies are known for their black body radiation as well. So as much as they absorb, they radiate too. And that's the nature of true darkness. People are scared, bewildered by darkness and think that darkness is likened to ignorance, to tamas, to lethargy, laziness. No. This darkness is the true darkness and is beyond all lights. And it is in that, this darkness that you can discover reality. The show of lights and sounds is over, my dear friends. No more smelling fragrances, tasting delicacies, seeing the beauties that you require to see, touching the things that give you delight through their softness or hearing that which is pleasant to your ears. All of that has vanished. So this darkness is not just about the absence of light. It's the absence of sound. It's the absence of smell. It's the absence of taste. It's the absence of touch as well. So all of these senses already vanished when we came up to the Ajna Chakra. So what's different from the Ajna to the Sahasrara? Well, to bring us up to the Ajna, as I told you yesterday night, we required effort. And a part of that effort was given by the, one of the tiniest glands that we have, an endocrine gland at the rear of our brain, called the pineal gland and this pineal gland secretes a hormone called melatonin which in turn results in the secretion of serotonin and also triggers the secretion of various other hormones by the various other glands of the endocrine system. But melatonin by itself is a sleep inducing hormone and therefore its secretion is cyclic as the brightness levels decreases it has a photosensor to recognize that and the darker that it is the more of melatonin that is released and melatonin gives us the utmost rest and therefore it's required for sleep for ordinary people and meditation for us sadhaks, yogis, seers, rishis. So this midnight rendezvous that we are doing for nine nights is a fast track upliftment of the Kundalini Shakti all the way from the Muladhara to the Guru Gayatri Chakra. We are now at the interface between the physical and the Metaphysical, at this border, we cross all boundaries because we no longer are in the physical. Already this was the peaking of the Sattva. So the Tamas is gone, Rajas is gone. Now Sattva is also gone as we move up here. And this melatonin 
cycles itself not only in a 24 hour cycle but also through the seasonal cycles and you see that in winter or in colder places you tend to sleep a little more than in warmer places or in summer. And as it secretes, you see, we lose out on words too. Even communication becomes a distraction. But just for the sake of inspiration, I'm trying my best to get out of that state of stillness, that state of Samadhi, a balanced intellect, no likes, no dislikes, in fact, no mind. The state that we have gone to beyond Dhyana to Samadhi. Forgive me for the longer pauses than usual. Because this bliss and ecstasy is so intoxicating. You feel like the most intoxicated of all drunkards and drug addicts. But without the physical damages that it causes to your system or the psychological toll that it takes in terms of various disorders. This is just pure bliss and ecstasy at all levels of your body, of your mind, of your intellect, of your prana, the very life, breath, energy, and of course, Brahman, your Atma. This is uncomparable. There's nothing like it. Very hard to describe. You need to explore it yourself. But as I said, nobody even you can't take yourself beyond the Agnya. It just happens out of grace, a free fall. It gets devoured, your own self gets devoured, eaten up. And that's the symbol of Kalaratri. It's not just Rakta Bhija who went into this lovely, beautiful tongue that you see. Yes, Rakta Bhija was that, was that Asura who had a boon from Brahma that if he were to shed a drop of blood as soon as it touches the ground of Mother Earth it would spring into another life-sized Rakta Bija of his own age, his own skills and capabilities. So that made him almost impossible to conquer, defeat or kill. And therefore, Kaliratri had to stretch her tongue over the surface of the earth and capture every drop of blood of Rakta Bhija before it could spill out onto the Mother Earth. And that Rakta Bhija is essentially our mind, our thoughts. The chain of thoughts that one leads to the other. Now, the mind that was there as the moon on the left eye that I talked about last night is subsumed as well. That is the end of Rakta Bija, our mind, which gives rise to thought after thought. One thought drops, another thought rises of a similar magnitude, of a similar worry for you and for those around you, whether in your office or, or at home or in whatever social circles you might be, but more often than not, to yourself. So this Brahmarandra that we have is Brahma Randra. It is essentially a pathway, a gateway, a doorway, almost physically and literally too, for a fetus. When we are all in our mother's womb, we first, or a very tiny fetus without life in it. 
the physical development takes place for a few weeks before life enters into it through the fontanel. And that's why a newborn child, we say, handle it carefully, especially close to the head, because there's a region of the skull that is not fully developed yet. And therefore, it is too soft and a hard knock there can create an opening. So that is the path through which life entered us when we were all in our own mother's wombs. And that was kept soft for a while because if that body was not conducive to manifest our karmas from the previous life, we would have just left. And our mother, poor mother would have had us stillborn and aborted the fetus. But we did find this particular mother's womb, whoever we have been born to in this particular life, conducive enough, and this body, mind and intellect conducive enough to get our karmas balanced out from the previous lives. And therefore we continued and we still are. Don't know till when. I might be gone by the time this video ends or tomorrow, day after tomorrow, next year, who knows. Before that, we need to do what we have come here for. We are so much diverted by all that's happening around us that very, very few of us, hardly a few percentage, maybe less than one percent who tend to venture in this spiritual ladder. Why? Because at every one of these stages that we already talked about for these six nights and before that as well, there are wonderful, beautiful, lovely, delicious, fragrant distractions, my dear friends. And we lose sight of our path. That's why we never stop night after night from Shailaputri to Brahmacharini and we kept on marching to what we have become last night Katyayani and today Kalaratri. As Katyayani we were able to embrace even those who are not our own biological children as our own. Whether they are humans, animals, plants, trees, or even the so-called non-living things. But now we are going to destroy the mind. We are going to destroy time. As Kalaratri, we are going to get into an emptiness, a hollowness. Far deeper and darker than any black hole. The dark matter first and then the dark energy. So that life which entered into us through this fontanel in the physical body is mapped into the subtle body of mind and intellect as the Brahmarandra or the Sahasrara. Sahasra referring to a thousand, but essentially infinity. But if you still want an explanation for why thousand, it's the 10 directions of northeast, west, south, southeast, southwest, northeast, northwest, up and down. So these 10 directions or dicks, as we call it in Sanskrit, dick. Each of them have about two different directions to go out and in, out being a distraction, in being the spiritual path. And now further these 20, because 10 into 2 is 20, have 50 
letters of the alphabet or basic sounds that we can make, all of which of course arose from A, which became Aum and then broke up into the various vowels like I, E, etc. and the various consonants like K, K, G, G, etc. So 50 into approximately 50, a little more than 50 maybe, into 20 is 1000 and that's the Sahasrara that we're talking about. So we are going beyond all directions as well. Not only have we transcended the five elements, the five sense organs, the mind, the five organs of action, but we are transcending even directions because there's no space. We already transcended it at the Vishuddhi. Now it's transcending the cause of space, which is time as well. <laughs> and at this Sahasrara, we are Kalaratri with four hands, just like what we had as Kandamata and Katyayani as well. And what we shall have later on as Mahagauri and Siddhidhatri as well tomorrow and day after tomorrow night when we'll conclude this series. All of four hands and common between them is the Abhayavarada Mudra. That is the blessings of giving boons and fearlessness. Because what is there to be scared of anymore? In fact, fear we said was conquered already over here. So this Abhaya is for the others who are looking at us, who don't know that they are a part of ourselves. We have already embraced them in an all-inclusiveness. And this Kalaratri has been the inspiration for almost all successful people, knowingly or unknowingly. I'll just give you a few examples of striking examples of people in different fields who have knowingly been influenced by Mother Kalaratri's darkness, which is the ultimate knowledge actually. People think knowledge is light. That is just material knowledge, a tinsel. 0.00001% of what true knowledge or wisdom rather is. And those who have been exposed to that wisdom coming and operating in the fields of day-to-day -day life in various professions, numerous examples can be quoted. But just a sample, let me give you a very, very small sample. One of the best literatures, far better than any literature that you can ever think of in any language, any place in the world, including all parts of India and all Indian languages too. And I'm saying this as a Tamilian proudly, Kalidasa. Yes, this gem of a literature, Kalidasa, was knowingly a devotee of Kali, not only in that particular life where he wrote such amazing magnum opuses, but also in his previous lives as well, which is why he was able to move on from being a deaf and dumb person to who he became eventually a wonderful literary scholar of great spiritual awakening. Let's not stop with an example of a person in the literary field. Let me give you an example of a mathematician, Srinivas Ramajan, again touched by Devi. Called, of course, by a different name, but essentially Kalaratri, the wisdom opening, made him <laughs> write down books and books after books of equations which many of which people are still breaking their heads over. How the hell could he get to them? Because he had the theories in place even before the practical observations were done. And that is possible 
according to himself only because the Devi bleeds these equations into him. That's a mathematician who recognized how his knowledge and wisdom was flowing through. There are many great mathematicians who don't even recognize that, but the source once again is Kalaratri, whether they know it or not. Let me give you another example of a military genius, a patriot. Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, another great devotee, well known of Mother Kalaratri. And you know what amazing things he achieved against a far more powerful military might of the British and various others from within the country who tried to beat his own plans. Well, there are a few people today too. This is what makes us sad, but there will always be these Shakunis amongst us who will chalk out our own disaster. But things move on because we are in an all-inclusive state where it just doesn't matter what other people are doing around us, what situations occur, etc. Give you three examples. Kalidasa, Srinivas Ramarajan, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Another great example. Dakshineshwar Mahaprabhu Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Aum Hamsa Hamsaya Vidmahe Paramahamsaya Divahi Tanno Hamsa Prachodayat. Till the point when Totapuri is wonderful Advaitic Guru took him from the Agnya to the Sahasrara. He was just caught up in the Agnya. Like many of us are caught up in the various other chakras, Muladhara, Swadhisthana, Manipura, Nahata, Vishuddhi as well. Or below that into the various Lokas of the Ashuras which is our tamasic lethargic gunas. Because at each end of these levels, as I said earlier in this very episode, there are distractions and these distractions are amazing, too tempting, very, very difficult for anybody to just give them up and keep marching, moving on. Even the great Ramakrishna Paramahamsa got stuck up here for a long period of time because of his attachment to Bhavadarini, another form of Katyayani. We saw Katyayani mother last night, who we wore yesterday, and he started playing a game of duality with her. Instead of recognizing that he was Katyayani, he was Bhavadarini, he was Kali, he was Durga. Once he recognizes that, then automatically you will have a free fall and further spiritual evolution will take place. But that distraction of Bhavadarini, Kali, Durga was so much even for the great, amazing Ramakrishna Paramahamsa that he got stuck up there until Totapuri, the Advaitic Guru, came and cut off his forehead with a piece of glass and made him manufacture through his Chit Shakti or imagination a sword the same imagination which was manufacturing this Devi as different from him because Devi is never ever different from us. If anybody is having a vision of Devi, it is a hallucination, it is an illusion because it is just an image, it's a selfie, it's a photograph. But the real thing is this, this is the Devi, this is Shailaputri, this is Brahmacharini, this is all the Devis that we have seen so far. Be it Chandraganta or Kushmanda, be it Skandamata or Katyayini, we are that. And we are the other three goddesses as well. 
fact, if we have some of this temptation to make that God is different from us by looking at the mirror image of who we are and thinking that is a goddess, then we get caught up and we need a Totapuri to come and cut our forehead to make us recognize we have manufactured, fabricated these gods and goddesses as tools for our development. We should not get up, get stuck up with these tools. We have to move on, move forward at high speed like a rocket with solid rocket boosters and the liquid rocket engines. And right here, top to here, we are brought by the cryogenic engines. But hereafter, it's a free fall in an intoxicated state. We go against gravity as Radha rather than Dhara. And we become from Katyayani to Kalaratri. And what do we have to ride over here? No longer the tiger, lion, etc. that we had. No room for that. A donkey. Yes. The vehicle of choice for us tonight as Kalaratri is a donkey. And we ride a donkey which is a symbol of hard work just to make fun of it saying... All these people who want to do hard work, hard work, hard work is the only way. Well, hard work is the only way to your graves. Yes, hard work is the only way to failure. No person who has been truly successful, either in the spiritual realms or the material realms, has had to do hard work because work is hard only for those people who hate their work, for those people who love their work and are smart enough to do their work efficiently. Work can never ever be hard. Work is always a smooth flow. And hard work is only for the donkeys and the donkeys amongst us. So give up this fascination due to Western influence with hard work and move back to our true original nature of doing work efficiently, smartly, and out of total love and involvement and dedication and attention so that no work from this moment for you, me, anybody who's watching this video should ever be hard and never ever claim to be a hard work lest you, unless you claim yourself to be a donkey and ass as well. Very strong words, but I'm not used to such harsh words, but I'm more interested in your spiritual development. What I have explored and what I have experienced. If you experience even 1% of it, I'm sure you'll start talking like this. Because this is unbelievable. This is amazing. And we want everybody else whom we love. And which is the entire world in my case to explore this and come all the way up to Agnya and just let go. And like a parachute, there is a free fall and you enjoy the entire trip, the beautiful reality of the oneness of everything. So in the four hands, two I said already, Abhaya and Varada for Kalaratri, the other two hands, she has a thunderbolt sword, which is having a curved edge like a hook. Once again, symbolizing the crescent or almost half moon to show that the mind is again out, separate, only used to kill the illusory. Because no obstacles remain anymore. All obstacles are illusory. And for that we need an illusory mind to kill it. And that's held out of the body. Out of who we are. 
neither the body nor the mind nor the intellect na deho namano na buddhi sachidananda atmoham eternal as i am and ephemeral as these three the body mind and intellect are i still know that these are extremely useful and wonderful tools if and only if i recognize what they are and take care of them properly and utilize them efficiently and effectively then these are wonderful tools as long as they last till our death the body mind and intellect so that is the nature with which if we want to come down we can come down if we want to stay there we can stay there but having gone there once you know the path and you can take to it as and when you want it this midnight kalaratri in total pitch darkness is absolutely conducive for your meditation as much as it is for your sleep so don't have bright lights in late evenings don't have late nights i know i myself am guilty of this almost being awake throughout nights for many a times but i never use lights i'm always in darkness almost in a cave except for these video shoots just to make the video appear better for you guys so that the focusing is better for the cameras even though the low light night shooting cameras are good i want to give you an image of the blissful ecstatic me to inspire you even more so this is the only time i have these lights on the rest of the time i am i am in my dark cave both literally in the outer world and figuratively in the inner cave of my mind as guru guha and well i thought there's not much to talk about things beyond the sattva and all gunas because it's silence which conveys this but somehow been talking and there is apparently so much that can be shared in words as well as long as we find the most apt and appropriate words to convey the message but still it's only a glimpse into what can be and i urge you to explore it all by yourself because there's nothing like this i mean who is telling this a professor a person who has had a wonderful healthy life a wonderful professional life a great academic life the best schools in the world as a top ranker having traveled to more than 46 countries in the world enjoyed life like anything in the so called materialistic sense the greatest family the greatest foods but none 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 of these things that i listed out now are even a fraction of a percentage close to the spiritual joy bliss and ecstasy that i have and that all of that was so much of effort and investment of time and energy into even though i love or doing all of those things you still have to even if you are efficient and love your work there is some time energy that you have to invest in that but here absolutely no investment you have it all in place just shut your eyes shut your other sense organs and just be in who you are and recognize this wonderful thing that you are capable of which you always were capable of but unfortunately slept over as i also did for many years in this life and all the previous lives but now that i have discovered no way this is going to be given up 
And no way I'm not, I'm going to stop sharing these things with y'all to inspire you to move on, to move ahead to these wonderful experiences. The specific experiences at each chakra might differ for different persons. And that's not the point at all. The point is to keep moving on and on and on as fast as you can to the Agnya Chakra with your love, with your efficient efforts, sadhana. And once you're there, take off. But there also don't get lost in the distractions like how Ramakrishna Paramahamsa got distracted until Totapuri's Tota guru came his way. But Ramakrishna Paramahamsa didn't go in search of Totapuri. Totapuri came in search of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. If you are destined, your guru will come in search of you. Because if you have put in that little bit of effort and love and devotion, the Karma Yoga, the Bhakti Yoga, the Jnana Yoga and Raja Yoga in the integrated fashion of Sankhya Yoga or Tantra or whatever other forms of worship or knowledge or work or techniques that you have been exposed to. If you have invested that much, then the Guru has no choice buddies. He or she has to come your way and get you liberated. Moksha, Mukti, Nirvana. That little pineal gland at the back of our head can do so much. Please take advantage of it. Because it's much more active in little children. And once they reach puberty, teenage, its secretion of melatonin reduces, its functionality reduces. And if we continue our teenage ways of being hijacked by our chemicals, hormone seyum kalagamida, then throughout life, however old you are, way beyond teenage also, keep suffering. And this pineal gland, by the way, dies out for most people even before the rest of the body does. So, to keep your pineal gland active, not be childish, but be childlike, be innocent. At the same time, you can do amazing works in the world and within yourself too. So that's my message from being in the Sahasrara Chakra tonight as Kalaratri. I am speaking to you not as Dinesh or Professor Dinesh Kumar Arur Sampat, but as Mother Kalaratri myself. Be blessed, be fearless. My boon to you is that you accelerate your path to your Agnya through your loving, selfless, efficient efforts and then you will definitely get your guru to take you through the free fall of the remaining chakras as Trigunatita. Jai Hind! Aam Shri Sahasrara Shakti Kalaratre Indramaha Aum Shri Sahasrara Shakti Devi Kalaratre Namaha Aum Shri Sahasrara Shakti Devi Kalaratre Namo Namaha